Hey there, and welcome to the Recovery Crew Podcast. I'm Dr. Bob Baer, and you're in the deep waters here. Uh, This is Deep Waters Recovery Network and Programs. Today we have a great guest, Stephen Long, uh, who has a great story, a great and juicy story, I might add. Uh, But also we're going to talk about the fifth step today, which is the center of the work where we really dig into... uh, uh, into our personality and find out what's working and what doesn't work. We're going to have a lively discussion about that today. Um, he, he, uh, uh, Stephen Long is the Director of Client Services at uh, Infinite Recovery here in Central Texas. I want to say a little bit about Infinite Recovery. There's very few treatment centers that have the full continuum of care. And uh, uh, Infinite has detox, inpatient um, uh intensive outpatient programming, also partial hospital programming, uh, outpatient program, as well as a lot of family uh, opportunities for families to get involved in recovery. So the full range uh, here, uh, as far as I know, that there's nobody that does it any better or, or offers the full range of service. So thank you for, uh, thank you, Infinite Recovery. And Michael Dadashi, by the way, that's his brainchild. It's an amazing outfit. Thanks for letting us have uh, Stephen Long for a few minutes here. I also want to give an, uh, uh, a uh, shout out to another outfit, Wellness Phi. Dot com, W-E-L-L-N-E-S-S-F-I, F-I, dot com. Now, these, these folks like to work with numbers and money. And the, uh, it's a tax advisory, bookkeeping, and uh, uh, a firm that uh, works with people like me, counselors and therapists and mental health practitioners, treatment folks, met folks who probably it wasn't their first thing on their list of things to do. They have to keep track of their finances. Now, uh, Mickey Carr over there and Crystal have dug me out of several holes. I, I, I rem- remember that they, they call it catch-up services, but really it's like uh, cleaning up the mess that I've made over the last few years. And they have a special uh, with that some uh, large percentage off just to get you started. So uh, if, you, if you're ready to get that started, please reach out to them. It's wellnessfive.com. Uh, let them know that you heard about uh, uh, that you heard about them uh, at the Recovery Crew podcast. All right, please like us and share and uh, uh, let folks know about this thing. Uh, it's a growing community, and we're glad you're part of it. And enjoy the show today with Stephen Long. Well, hey Stephen Long. Hey. Hey, hey Hello. glad you're here, Doctor Bob Bear. It's good to be here with you. Yeah, I'm glad to have you here. This is my good brother, Stephen Long, who also happens to be, uh, you know, I don't know, can you be an expert on 12-step recovery? Isn't there something incongruent about that? Aren't we supposed to be humble and not have it all figured out? But if anybody does have it figured out, uh, you know, at least for me, this is, uh, he looks like a young man who maybe, uh, I'm an old guy, I'm supposed to have, this guy does really have a lot of the answers about 12-step recovery. Um, and that's why I brought you on here, especially for the fifth step. The fifth step is a, is is one that a lot of people I think sort of skim over and uh, don't do it in the old school way. And when I say old school, I mean the poetic, beautiful way that it's described in that book that you and I uh, that you and I have spent quite a bit of time with. <clears throat> um, so welcome here. We're going to do two things. We're going to get some of the Stephen Long story. Uh, but uh, I want to invite everybody here to the to the Recovery Crew podcast. This is uh, this is we've been doing this for a while now. We're bringing in experts on recovery, trauma, and launching into a life of meaning. Uh, this is uh, produced by uh, Deep Waters Recovery. Uh, also on here behind the scenes here is Nicole Chargois. She is our program uh, manager. And uh, so throughout this thing, if you want to contact us and give us some feedback on the podcast or participate in this thing, we really want you to. And uh, uh, and also, if you are interested in any of our programs, our, uh, our, our advanced IOP program uh, and several other opportunities to do healing. So, Nicole, would you uh, give the contact information and say whatever else you'd like to say about the program? Yeah, we would love to hear from you. If you have any questions about our program, comments, or if you want to be part of our podcast, uh, you can reach us at 512-677-7847 
or email us at admin at deepwatersrecovery.com. That's admin, A-D-M-I-N, at deepwatersrecovery.com. And again, our number is 512-677-7847. Nice. Thank you. All right. So here we are, uh, uh, ready to launch this thing. And uh, I'm really excited about this because actually uh, about seven years ago, I don't know, maybe you can correct me. I'm not great on dates and times, but you know, I've been doing this deal for a long time when this guy was uh, probably a baby or something. I don't, uh, but I've never, I was sort of jumping around between different 12-step programs, different healing modalities. And then I was clinical director out at a great treatment center, the, the last resort. I'm going to throw out several uh, probably different treatment centers during this podcast today that uh, Stephen and I have had deep connections with and have a lot of respect for. Uh, uh, that's one of them. The last resort treatment center out in Smithville is where I ran into this guy. And it was really my, uh, it was one of my first experiences with what I consider to be the real deal version of recovery. And uh, maybe I'll, uh, uh, there's several treatment centers that are still doing some of the, the, and maybe we'll get some of this from you, Stephen, about the origins of this work. And uh, uh, Mark Houston had a part, of, part in that. I, it's really, I just want to let you know, it's okay to promote or say or talk about anything you want on here. I want to get a little bit of the history of this old school okay. version of recovery that has saved so many lives. So um, I'll let you uh, tell your story here in a minute, but uh, he's been, uh, Stephen, uh, just by way of bio, he's been in, uh, in executive roles at several treatment centers in, in central Austin and uh you know, I don't think he hangs his hat on that. I don't think you hang your hat on that as much as you hang your hat on the deep commitment to middle of the night. It doesn't matter. Stephen Long is there. He'll get up in the middle of the night and go do a 12-step call. And uh, I've never met anybody as committed. So it's uh, uh, it's beautiful to have you here. If you want to say more about your, uh, about your uh, bio, you can. But uh, I'm glad you're here. We're going to talk about the fourth step in a while. But first, why don't you just do the... Uh, introduce yourself to us and tell a little bit of your story about what got you here, brother. Thank you, Dr. Bob Bear. Uh, like Bob shared, like Bob shared, uh, um, it's a very close friend of mine, and I'm absolutely blessed, man, uh, to be a part of uh, uh, this deal. Uh, thank you so much. I'm extremely grateful to uh, be here with you, Cash, today, man. I uh, and and man, you're right. Like I, I uh, we'll talk a little bit about. Um, these different centers and, and like the stuff that God has absolutely put in my life. And, you know, um, and we'll talk a little bit about that and the ability that God's given us, right. To, uh, men like us to, to help more men, uh, like us, you know, and, and I think that that's, that's all that is. It's just a, a gift that God has given us as a, to be vehicles to help more men and, uh, uh, outside of our personal recovery as well. And, and, uh, but, but you're right, man, like, uh, for me, it's, uh, that's not the most important thing. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, what we do in our everyday life. It's what I do in my everyday life. And I wish I, I, I wanted to come here and, 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 and talk to you about how perfect I am in my recovery. But since yeah. we're going to be talking about step later and inventory and, and reading of that inventory and confessions and all that other stuff in the fifth step process, I, I guess I'll go ahead and get honest. You know, uh, I, I am absolutely not perfect in my recovery. And, uh, but I do my best to stay as close to it as I possibly can because it's absolutely saved my life. Uh, and I'm an absolute 12 step guy, man. Um, uh, as an individual that's uh, uh, spent most of his life trying to find something uh, that's going to provide the freedom that he always wants, you know, man, that's all I ever wanted. Like I, I the more and more I do this deal, like um, I remember when I first showed up to recovery, man, I, I was a pretty angry individual I have my defects consist of outward anger and, and rage now I say rage right my wife just calls them grown-up fits but you know whatever you know um, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I've definitely experienced uh, uh, those are some heavy defects of mine and, and coming in here man it was like um, uh, uh, um, I was I was so intent on you seeing that guy right uh that i wasn't afraid of anything i was gonna keep you away with this anger and all of this stuff and what i found and what was truly inside of me man was just a guy that 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 wanted to make connections you know that really wanted to make connections it wasn't a bad guy at all as a matter of fact 
um, through a lot of inventory, a lot of inventory, and that's just a big process in my life that I use uh, to see the truth about how I show up in life. But uh, what really drives me, uh, you know, um, I absolutely have a fear of, of, of confrontation and being alone and being abandoned and rejection and all those other things that we get to see in inventory. I wouldn't been able to tell you that my first year, but, um, you know, um, I'm getting to a place through this process where it's like, man, I absolutely found um, a process that helps me be the guy that I've always been. And this is something that I share with guys and I'll get, uh, 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 get off of it and, and talk about something else. But something I share with, with, with guys all the time is I, I think we come in here, at least my experience was I came in here with, with a delusion that I don't deserve a great life. Um, mm. And I used to, you know, I used to say, well, I don't deserve this. This is gifts from God. And that's, I don't deserve this. Now, as I stay here, I mean, I'm just a piece of shit and, you know, um, um, all the bad stuff that's happened to me. You know, it's my, my, I find that self-pity can be just as dangerous as self-righteousness. And uh, um, and uh, what I find is, is those belief systems that I have that a real man is strong and a real man is honest and a real man is invested and a real man is loyal and communicative, you know, um, those things that I really couldn't meet up to most of my life. Um, that's who I truly am. And uh, what I find is that the disease of addiction sits on top of that. Right. And the 12 steps helps me move that stuff away and be who I've always been. The 12 steps didn't build a new Stephen, didn't build a new Bob. You know, uh, the 12 steps just moved all the bullshit away so I can actually be that person. And these are the promises. Right. Yeah. Like these are the promises. And I get to be um, a good dad. I get to be um, trustful, you know, trustworthy. I get to be uh, forgiving. Uh, I get to be uh, forgivable. I get to be um, an individual with integrity, you know, that uh, people want around because that's who I've always been. And what I find in recovery, man, is like the rooms are full of them, man. Like brilliant, talented, invested, intelligent, um, artistic individuals uh, that the world can't do without, man. Like, and so like my journey um, is to like, as I get to sit down with more and more guys knee to knee, man, is like, like, let's communicate that truth. Let's change our language about, oh, I'm in the four step, oh, this sucks. You know, I'm in the inventory, it's horrible, to a positive outlook, right? And Emmett Fox, I'm, I'm a real big Emmett Fox guy. Uh, and, uh, you know, Golden Key of Prayer, uh, a Life is Consciousness, and, uh, um, you know, Mental Equivalent, things like Sermon on the Mount. I'm just a, a real big Emmett Fox guy. And, and uh, I think all of this stuff that we do in the 12 steps, and uh, something that, that I found out that, uh, uh, hopefully I'm not going too long here, but there's something I want to share. Be great. Go for it. It's funny how some of this this uh, stuff, you know, um, as you dig a little bit deeper, you find out. Uh, there's a book out there called uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Uh, there's a book out there that's Sermon on the Mount by Emmett Fox. And then there's a book out there that I truly, truly love. And it's called, the, it's called Alcoholics Anonymous. It's a big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. All of those texts were written within seven months of each other. Um, mm. Yeah. It's not a coincidence. Um, and like all of those things are about um, owning deficiencies, seeing the truth, um, rectifying those deficiencies, rectifying our past, and going out and attracting beautiful things in our life. And that's what the 12 steps are about for me today, right? Seeing those, and we'll talk about that with the fifth steps, you know, that, that truth and how we show up and rectifying those things and changing those ripples that we've, that we got coming back to us. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and experiencing this, these beautiful things like this podcast today, man, you know, I can tell you that um, I wouldn't have been ready for this the first year of my recovery. Um, and uh, so it's an absolute beautiful thing that I'm here today. And, and yes, man, 12 steps are everything in my life. It's provided me uh, with a relationship uh, with God. I, I choose to call God and I use that out of convenience. Uh, the power that works in my life is far bigger than the word. God. Uh, but um, with that thing, um, has provided me friendships like yours uh, and with my wife, my kids, you know, and just amazing things. Um, but it wasn't always that way, man. You know, um, you know, I, I didn't, you know, and I'll share very briefly that I just didn't come from a, I didn't come from a nice place. And, and I don't share that a lot. I, I share it when I, when I speak and, and I share it very briefly uh, simply because like the delusion for me uh, for a long period of time was that that's the that's why I did what I did, because where, I, where I'm from, and, and the things that I experienced in, in the system at a very young age, and a lot of pain, and, and those things, and, and uh, um, 
as I as I stay in this thing longer and longer, and I and I get to interact and engage with more and more addicts and alcoholics, I've lost track of them. But you know, uh, um, what I find is for every individual who has my story, there's three individuals who had showed up to every baseball game. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what I find is that disease of addiction and alcoholism isn't because of what happened to me as a kid. That's just my experience. This is the way that I experienced the disease of addiction and alcoholism. And uh, I think everybody has their opinions on that, if, if I'm correct, you know. Uh, everybody has their, their side on it. And, and, and for me, uh, the truth that I believe in is that I just got this thing, man. You know, I just got this thing, and it's absolutely my responsibility to do the things that I need to do to get to a place, man, where um, I can experience life fully just like God would want me to. Uh, and I've, and, and so life wasn't, uh, it wasn't the best, you know, um, and uh, I blamed a lot of, you know, and, and fast forward, you know, um, tons of institutions, uh, not very nice places I grew up in. And then I finally got to a place where I said that uh, um, I used to, I used to look at people, man, and I used to think, man, if I had what you had, you know what I mean? Like if I had, bro, if I had that family you got, if I had the dad that you had, man, you got a car. We didn't have a car. <laughs> if we had a car, if we could afford, you know, if 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 we had, if I had what you had, man, I wouldn't do the things that I did, you know. Uh, and here's what God did. God said, "Bet I'll double down on you." He said, and he gave me um, all of those things. <laughs> and guess what? I still couldn't stop shooting methamphetamines. And I found myself in a situation in a hotel room. Where, uh, now, now, keep in mind, like I got two vehicles now. I have a nice apartment off 620 and 2222. I have a job, and like uh, a great job. I'm supporting my wife and my kids. I can't stop shooting methamphetamines. I keep emptying out bank accounts, right? Uh, I keep not showing up, right? Now, I don't want to do those things. I don't want to do those things. Now, and I wish that I could, and this is something that I share with guys. See, my truth and, and my experience, and all, each experience is different, but my experience was I can't tell you when the last time was it was fun to shoot men at the I, I, I don't remember when that stopped happening. You know, that wasn't my truth. I didn't come in here like, oh, I'm missing a party. You know what I mean? It wasn't like that for me. Um, it was at a point where I would have done anything for a boring day with somebody cleaning a cup of coffee. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> and that was just my experience. That's what I wanted more than anything, you know? So when I came here, it was that of desperation. It was that of, I'll do whatever it takes. Uh, and I found myself in a hotel room, uh, and I've been in this hotel room before, but not this exact hotel room. If you understand what I'm saying, I've been in this situation. And, and uh, my mind says that my kids deserve a life insurance policy more than a junkie dad. And uh, what God does is God kind of steps in on that situation. I find myself back in Austin State Hospital. And, and, uh, and, and this time, Bob, man, I'm not on the streets, brother. Like, I'm not, I'm not out there with those cats, you know, because I've been here before. But I, I'm not out there with those cats like that. Like, I got a wife and all the beautiful things I said that I needed. Yeah. And, uh, and, I remember, and, and, I, and I remember being there and, and, uh, and talking to my wife, and, and my wife says, you know, like, uh, I said, I'm going to wait for a state bed. I'm going to get in treatment. And my wife says, no, no, no. We're doing everything we can to find you a place where they send real addicts and alcoholics. And uh, um, she took donations and, and pulled out 401k and did, did a whole bunch of stuff to get me into a, a – and that was Mark, Mark Houston's, um, you know, um, since we're not going to hold back names, you know. Uh, Mark Houston Recovery was an absolute uh, godsend. Uh, uh, that's when Chris was over there, and uh, 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 Marsha and uh, and uh, solid, solid individuals. Love those individuals, and uh, and uh, um, that was right before Mark's change to benchmark and had a couple names since then. But uh, and uh, the message was given to me, man, and the message was given to me pure and clean and straight out of the big book. And these individuals love me. They love me with the truth. And they didn't, they didn't yell or scream at me, man. Like, we were held accountable and we were brought the truth. But uh, whatever delusion around uh, negativity or, or, or uh, um, uh, whatever, whatever perception I had, um, and I think a lot of individuals that go through a firm 12-step 
centers get, you know, when we do accountability groups and all those other things, Bob, we've had experience with that at last resort together, right? Uh, that those are just early on perceptions of my misconception of love, right? I don't see love in that. I said, oh, they're out to get me, you know? Um, and today I, I understand with all my heart that those were individuals who were loving me with all that they had. And uh, um, I got to experience that. And I, and I got to tell you, here was my experience and I'll hurry up here. Um, uh, I remember moving through the work and getting to a place where um, I was on, st and, and like when I came in, I didn't enter, I didn't talk to people like I'm talking to right now. Like, like that's just not what I did. I watched. I'm a watcher, man. See, I'm going to watch and see how you show up. I'm going to see who you talk to. I'm going to see how you talk to old boy. Because, see, that kept me safe for a long time, man. So I'm going to watch and see how I can interact with you and old boy and old girl and how that's going to show and what I need to do to protect myself. And uh, I know that there are a lot of inventory today, but, uh, and, and so I'm showing up, I'm watching and, and I'm doing what they tell me to do. And, uh, through my identification, uh, identification in the, in the first step, man, like had a huge experience there. Um, and, uh, started moving through the work and I finally got to a spot, man, where like uh, I was doing my men's, my men's list. And, and I realized I hadn't thought about dope in a couple of weeks and, I hadn't lied to anybody in a couple of weeks. See, I, I mean, dishonesty was just a part of my life, man. And, and I think that's for any addict or alcoholic or human. I think that might be a human condition. I don't know. Um, but uh, uh, that's red. No, it's not. It's yellow. It's red. You know, like it's, it's, it's just there. And, and uh, I noticed that I hadn't lied to anybody in a couple of weeks. And, and I started to find out that, like, I couldn't do those things at a certain level without consequence and, and uh, internal consequence. And, and I started to interact with people different and engage with people different, man. And uh, um, the rest is history. Uh, and I remember sharing in my first meeting and, and, uh, and I found my purpose, buddy. I found my purpose through this process. And, and that's to work with addicts and alcoholics, man. Uh, that's to, to do this thing, man. And, and, uh, and, and buddy, like, uh, I think that there's one or two things that uh, make us the most present in the world. And I think meditation is, is one of those for anybody, but, uh, for me, my truth is that uh, nothing works, brings me as present as sitting with another individual. There is a group of people uh, or one-on-one -on -one with an individual breaking down the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, watching this individuals, this individual move from devastation and, and disaster to a place of victory, you know, watching his life change. Um, and, uh, like, man, I, I, I there's nothing that I'd rather do on the face of this planet. Um, and today I'll tell you that um, through all of that, I have a beautiful life. Um, not just working with that as an alcoholic, man, but I get to, get to hang out with a beautiful woman today. Uh, most beautiful woman I've ever known. Uh, my wife, Carrie. I have two beautiful children. They're still a part of my life. Junior, uh, uh, I call them June Bug and Devin Beth. And uh, God has absolutely been gracious and merciful with me. Um, and there's a little bio that was a little longer than I wanted to go, but oh man, you know, if we're talking about me, I'm okay with it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> for both of us, before we found recovery, the talking about ourselves had a different agenda. Now, yeah. now I'm, I'm I'm just trying to stay in my heart and live my life and be present and try to help other people do the same thing. There's nothing more interesting to me. I don't know what happened to me. What have you done to me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm entertained by healing and shit like that. Uh, I was only I was only interested in trying to kill all my feelings, but in some way, so I didn't have to feel anything. And now, you know, guys like you are teaching me how to just let it come up when it comes up. A couple of tough. We're from a long. I'm from a. I may not be a tough guy or look like it to anybody, but I'm from a long line of. And um, to let the tears come up when they come up was brand new to me in recovery, and that's where the. I know there's truth being spoke when that uh, when when that when that comes up in me and, and same with you. It looked good. Yeah, on absolutely, looks absolutely. Good. God is pretty big, man. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't. Uh, uh, man. Yeah. Yeah, we're a couple of good examples of tough cases, hopeless cases. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and here we are, right? Wow. Yeah. Like, talk about a miracle. Like, I, I've always thought it would be really good to fit everybody with a like a a hat with a big screen up here that just repeats showing all the worst shit that we've ever done. 
like showing the world all the worst, the worst shit we've ever done. It would like bring us all down to earth, wouldn't it? A little bit. We should create that and bring it in as a vulnerability contract at a treatment center. Yeah, I always. Yeah, nice. I always come up with products that nobody wants. So anyway. yeah. <laughs> um, so. So we're gonna to get to the fifth step here eventually, but man, I've got a juicy character here and I've got a couple of things I just wanna hear you say something about before we move on to that. Um, so one of the themes in uh, your check-in was, uh, that I think I'm hearing it right, and you can say it in your words, but uh, what made us alcoholics is way, way less important than the fact that we just need to surrender to the fact that we are and do the shit that we need to do right. to transcend that. Right? right, there's a misconception. A lot. We got to figure out why and what happened to us. And we got to heal the trauma, but we it's it didn't cause the addiction. And even if it did, it's a non-issue, right? It's it, it's. I heard uh, I heard years back. I I heard somebody speaking and talking about you know um, you know it's and it's and if you do enough family programs and you talk to enough families, right? You you know well, why is my son or my daughter yeah. this way? And it's like. What does it matter? You know what I mean? At this point, like, like, like the car's in the ditch. We need to get the car out of the ditch, right? Exactly. And, and I heard somebody say, put it that way uh, years ago, and then just kind of like, absolutely. Like when you're in, you, I visualize stuff like that. I go to the side of the road with the car in the ditch, and it's like, yo, how did this happen? We're not going to nitpick over how this happened at this point. We just need to get the heck out of the ditch. It is a life and death disease. This thing is not. Absolutely. This is not a mild thing we're talking about here. Yes, and in like my experiences, absolutely being that individual that's, you know, um, the language that I want to use here, um, absolutely being the individual that God sought to, you know, um, be a part of. A lot of hope, but a lot of pain as well, man. Um, got to watch a lot of people die, you know, um, and a lot of people go away and a, and a lot of, and a lot of, you know, um, because it absolutely is. It's absolutely a life or death deal. And when you get those calls from moms when their babies are dead on the floor, um, you know, it kind of sinks in, you know, and. Uh, um, um, so, yeah, the, the, the obsession with figuring out why, but, you know, it's, also, it's, atta also attached to that, I have a, I have a, a, a a mature guy in recovery here on this podcast today. You also know that after we get the car out of the ditch, you better look at some of that shit underneath the surface for relapse prevention, right? It's not. Absolutely, man. Like, like that's, that's the issue though, right? The book says we had to get down to causes and conditions, yeah. right? Like the, 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 those are the things that we have to look at. And like, my truth is, is that, it was never the dope or the alcohol that was the issue, man. Um, that was a solution for me. Right. Um, like, it fixed me. And for an addict or an alcoholic, uh, and for the individuals who don't know, like, dope and alcohol fixes alcoholics and addicts. It doesn't mess them up worse. Like, it does for me. It's medicine. It's medicine. Until, it's medicine until we get the real medicine. A absolutely. It did for me. Like, it does to my mom. Yeah. Um, alcohol is, is going to mess her up. What it does for me is it makes me whole. It yeah. makes me breathe again, right? See, so it's not the alcohol. Uh, that was simply a solution, and I crossed over a barrier sometime. Um, I used to have a sponsor, old school cat, had an accent. I loved him, man. Uh, in, in the beginning of my recovery, he used to say, uh, Stephen, you're, like uh, you're like a pickle. You know, uh, you'll never be able to be a cucumber again, man. Um, you're always going to be a pickle. Like, there's no going back there. And yeah. why is not important. We just are, you know. Uh, and we absolutely need to look at the the, uh, the chassis and the axle and all that other stuff. What's going on, the defects, the fears, the selfishness. Uh, and that's what we get to look in the inventory and, and really uh, get feedback and then assist that. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. So th this, by the way, in case I forget to say this, one of my favorites, I've repeated it so many times. My old friend, Stephen Long, well, sometimes when he says goodbye to me, he says, I wish you a lot of pain, Bob. I mean, think about that for a second. Is that uh, on, on the on the surface of it? it Look, like, well, that's not very friendly. <laughs> but but we, oh, Stephen knows the only reason I'm here and alive, and absolutely why you're here and alive, is you got in enough pain to surrender, right? 
and to start doing, and one thing, another thing I want to throw in here is for those of you that are listening that didn't do the wacko stuff that I did, and uh, maybe we'll have Stephen back and we'll get even more wacko stories, but we also don't want to be doing, uh, what do we call it, war stories, right? We don't want to like be uh, making like that was, because uh, you can start, that's not a good path to go down. But the, the fact is, without pain, <laughs> it did, we got right close to that death thing. Just to stare at it long enough to be in enough pain to say, wait a minute, I, I need some help. Which are words that never came out of my mouth until recovery. Those were the last words I was supposed to ever say. I'm, uh, to tell somebody what I'm feeling and to ask for help. Where I was, I was told that those are the last things on the list to ever do. So it took a lot of pain. So that's a friend that says, hey, Bob. I hope you get enough pain to do the work. All right, so one other thing that you talked, two other things you talked about, and I'm going to make this into a longer deal because I got you here, and I'm like, it's a juicy opportunity. Um, but if you would say something about what is, so you hesitated to say Mark Houston. I don't know, there's controversy, controversy there. He's kind of a little rough-edged. A lot of people in treatment want something a little gentler and softer and kinder and all that. I get it. Uh, and maybe there is a version that is even more effective. I don't know, but something happened there. And I'm just wondering if you'd be willing to speak briefly to the, what is the main difference in uh, the, the, because here in central Texas, there is a strain of quality, effective treatment that in, in certain treatment centers that, that creates what I cons consider to be sustainable recovery versus drive-by recovery. And I think a lot of it came out of that model. And it's a little bit of a mystery to me. I wonder if you'd be willing to just speak to the essence of what's different about that model. Well, my experience with the difference about that model is the investment. Uh, absolutely the investment, not just the content. Um, as far as my experience with, with Marx is like, uh, and I'm, I absolutely love that center. Uh, no matter where I go, no matter where I work, no matter what I, what God puts in my like, I will always be the individual that that says that uh, that that entity over there, um, and no matter where they change the name, whatever it is, like um, I will always speak to um, you know as an alumni of, of Mark Houston, I will always speak to that program, and I will always re you know refer cats over there uh, for those harder cases. Um, because that's that's a beautiful place. And as far as uh, as far as what's the difference, uh, and something that I've tried to carry into every place that I get to 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 work um, is the investment, man. Like the individuals that worked with me, like they were invested. You know, uh, it wasn't just a yo, we're leaving at, after eight hours. That, it wasn't like that. And like the the I think the biggest thing that carries over is is just like the book says. And, and, and the book says that I can't transmit something I haven't got. Yeah. Do my best today, even like as an individual who gets to hire individuals that work with individuals and like God's blessed me with that opportunity. Like I'm picking certain people, man. You know what I mean? Like people, I'm picking people, people that, are, that doing, are doing these. People that, that are really doing, doing the deal. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I'm not, I mean, we're doing like part of my, when I, when I get to sit down and interview people, it's like, what's your nightly reviews look like? You know what I mean? Like, what's meditation looking like? You know, like ultimately, and that's the way it was with the individuals. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, I'm from RCAs to PDs. Like that's when I was in Marks. That's the way. And 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 uh, you know, I'm just sharing my experience when yeah, I was. Say more about that. Make sure you're explaining these little uh, these little uh, disciplines that you have. Oh, absolutely. And and I mean, um, individuals did their nightly reviews at home and they came and they said, no, no. Hey, Stephen, I'm asking you, RCA, you got to explain that. Oh, oh, okay. It's like a tech. It's like a, uh, observe, report, direct, redirect. Uh, it's the daily person that walks through, make sure that the okay. is done. Okay. I um, and, uh, um, like from them all the way to the individuals that, uh, ran the center. Like they invested themselves in, in, in recovery, you know, Thank just you, the last resort. That's, a, that, that's one of the, that's, that's why I was hoping you would say that is that's the underlying uh, main uh, philosophy at deep waters. It's a community based healing versus a clinical uh, based healing. I don't want to get down. I'm a clinician. Don't hold it against me, but in community based healing, 
the person that is most capable, the most effective is a person that's done the work themselves, right? There's no university that's going to give me a degree in, in, in uh, having done deep healing work around my negative messaging. There's no university that's going to give me a, a degree in, in uh, uh, being an expert at looking at my own character defects and making amends and cleaning up my side of the street. I'm not going to get that. <laughs> and it's really hard to transmit that to someone else if I don't have it in my body. To me, it's like a no brainer. Uh, it needs to be at the forefront of treatment. So thank you. For, yeah, absolutely. And that's, and that's from peers as well. Like that example is set from the staff to the senior peers and the senior peers, like those are community run places, yeah. right? Like they hold each other accountable. Uh, they cook together, they eat together, they, you know, like that's, and that's what we do out here, right? In the fellowship out here, like we need each other. We can't do it alone. One of the things we do battle against is the fact that somehow people think that clinical work is more evidence-based. And I'm very grateful for some of the more recent research that has shown, wait a minute, this is, no, a 12-step recovery, if you work the program, and my personal research has shown that's a, it's a hundred percent, hundred percent success for people that actually do all the shit, <laughs> hundred percent, right. really high. But even, uh, uh, but there's several research, uh, 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 um, multi. I can't think of the word, but they've looked at many different research, uh, different studies, and come up with there's nothing more effective than twelve step recovery overall. <clears throat> so there you have it. Well, and, and you know, uh, the book says the great reality is deep down inside each one of us, man. Yeah. Capital G, capital R. That's God, right? Um, and like, here's the deal. Like, in my opinion, disregard it if you want to, but my opinion is that there's nothing stronger than that, buddy. And when you tap into the great reality that's deep down inside of you, yeah. you cannot stop that. And you will watch God do amazing work with hundreds and thousands and millions of individuals. Yeah. And that's why the 12 step process is so effective. Yeah. And God right. is just, God is just shorthand for the result that happens inside of us. And in our connection with each other, it's just shorthand. I know a lot of people get triggered with it because of their wounds around it, but uh, hopefully people listening can, can, uh, uh, can, can hear around that. What we're really talking about is heart to heart connection. The other thing I want to throw out of here, Stephen, is you don't talk that much about it because you got your lane, but I also know you've done a lot of work in other programs too. And I always want to make sure that everybody knows that we're not just talking about those of you that put needles in your arms and uh, drank ourselves into uh, almost death. This really works for any dependency. And uh, I want to make sure that we're, uh, th this, th this style of recovery that Stephen's talking about works when it comes to when we're adjusting our chemistry, our oxytocin through love or gambling or food. Don't get me started on that one. All right. So, so I, I, I want to say something about that. The, this, this book is the original 12-step text, okay? Any 12-step fellowship from this point forward, hundreds of them, by the way, that are very successful, that help millions of people outside addicts and out, like substance abuse, right? Um, eating, love, gambling, like very successful. Codependence, like it works, right? It's about, it works. Um, and so, and, and I don't want to be, I don't want to be, so one more, one more before we launch, and that was the, you got my attention with Emmett Fox, uh, Napoleon Hill, uh, Bill W. All within a couple of years, these incredible seven months, huh? seven months, seven months. These incredible light, uh, culture transforming texts burst forward in the mid '30s, which remind is like a time uh, there haven't been too many times like we're going through right now in our culture. Right now, I wonder what was happening then, and any thoughts about what's happening now? Uh, the mid '30s was the uh, depression. It was the middle of it. It's um, well, after, the the crash, side, yeah. after the uh, crash, everybody lost their shit, and then <laughs> any thoughts about that? Uh, well, I mean, not so much about that, but I just think it's constant, right? I think it's 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 not so much. The, the, the times we're in, as far as that goes, I, I think that each individual in their own path always has a tragedy or a depression or a great depression or a, a, a recession or whatever it is, whether it's yeah. spiritual, emotional or, or financial, right? So like, 
as far as the content goes and the truth movement and and because the truth is capital t right the truth is is that we manifest what's in our life right mm -hmm. stuff and so we manifest that if i'm in a place of of extreme pain internally or or i'm in a place of financial ruin or i'm in a place of whatever it might be it is absolutely uh, and as an individual that's been through all of that stuff and we'll probably experience maybe some of that again right like i'm the one who needs to see the truth and the truth is is that i have every bit of ability right regardless of what's going on in my life to change my language to change my outlook and make my reality what i want it to be right and, and that's i believe what all of this text is about right through doing something different living by principles uh, investing in, in a body of disciplines that's going to get me closer to being the human being I've always was meant to be and being of service, being loving, being kind, being tolerant, and watching God provide, excuse me, truth, God, whatever you want to call it, provide those beautiful things in my life. Whether you, you can't use that word. God, you're going to trigger I love God. To use that I word. love God. Yeah. <laughs> Amen, brother. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Sometimes I got to get you back on here for every topic. Like it's not a religious program where you get off the no. idea that it's, re it's, and it's even the word spiritual triggers some people, but anyway, we can use the word energy. We can use the word truth. We can use the word universe. We can use the word higher power, whatever you want to do. All right. So there's some flexible flexibility. When I met Stephen, he wasn't quite as flexible as he is now. So there's no. much progress. <laughs> We've all made some progress. So I'm going to, we're going to make the transition here, my brother. Um, I want to, uh, we're doing this series of uh, steps so that folks can go on the podcast if they, and you can even be assigned by a counselor or uh, somebody to listen to the 12 podcasts. We're bringing experts in to talk about experts, right? Are we experts? We've been through it. That's meant, that moves us toward expert. Uh, share my experience. We'll share, we'll, we'll share our experience. So um, let me just talk a little bit. So, uh, you know, you don't start with the fifth step. <laughs> the steps are in order for a reason, which you might speak to in a minute. Uh, you know, we, we come in, we, we have somebody around us that loves us enough, like Stephen loved me, and say, I hope you have some pain. And then God brings some pain, or the universe brings us some pain enough to say, all right, I need help. And then, you know, the first step is just about learning how to say I, I have a, I'm a mess and being able to, or I have some shit to work on I cannot stop using this stuff and then that is the only time when I get in that kind of desperation place that it even occurs to me that maybe there's something outside of me to help that's kind of the second step the third step is when we've done enough work we've been around and we can make a decision that's authentic to at least let go of my control that much <laughs> You know, I'm usually in a group where I can, there's at least one person I can trust plus the doorknob, right? The one person and the doorknob. Now I've got my trust built. <laughs> you know, like some people make the doorknob their God. I, we don't give a shit, really, as long as it's letting go of controlling everything. For me, it's just like one, I got a guy that says he's just clawing at the onion. We're, claw, <laughs> we're clawing at another level of letting go of control. And then... Mm -hmm. And then it might be time to do the real work. And I think, we, I think uh, which is looking at my side of the street in a very active way, right? And, you know, step four is uh, we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Uh, one of the quotes from the book is, we earnestly pray for the right ideal for guidance in each questionable situation for sanity and for the strength to do the right thing. Yeah. So the fourth step is about uh, is a real methodical uh, listing, investing, uh, searching, uh, but and that that is not a process that you want to try to do. We want to try to do by ourselves because we don't have the ability. We can only see this tiny little percentage. Um, so I, I don't want to spend spend the whole time on step four. But would you just speak uh, speak to how important it is to do a thorough fourth step as we move toward our fifth step? Absolutely, uh, which has absolutely been my experience, and, and I'm a big inventory guy, man. Uh, and again, I was given the, uh, I was given the, uh, uh, the vision 
um, real early on. Um, Explain, that, hey, Stephen, so that's one of those catch words that we use, inventory. Some people that are just kind of tuning into this dance don't even know what we mean by inventory. So four-step inventory is where I take an inventory just like a um, uh, if you've ever worked at a retail sp spot, uh, a store, anything where you take an actual physical inventory of the candy bars on the shelf, of the dresses on the rack, uh, on the milk in the, in the, free, in the refrigerator, uh, it's exactly that same thing, but with our defects, our fears, right, our deficiencies, uh, our selfishness and how that manifests in our lives. The true problem of the addict and the alcoholic is selfishness and self-centeredness and how that manifests in our lives. That might be resentment. That might be fear. That might in include our sex conduct. That might include uh, jealousy, judgment, um, uh, bitterness. Are y'all, you, you follow me with that? Like, you see, this is why, and th this is why that step isn't first. <laughs> no, you can't see that. For, and, and, and without the, without the identification in the first step that Bob talked about, um, there's no way, and first thing I want to say is no regular human being is running around doing inventory, right? Like, this is just my experience, like, like, and this is something I share with my guys is, or excuse me, the guys that I get to work with, um, is that my experiences, um, and I wish it wasn't this way, but my experience is because it's such a benefit. Uh, my experience is, is the only people that really do this stuff are the people that have to. Um, and the people that are very successful, um, very successful people uh, do things like a, a, a personal inventory. Uh, because they see the necessity uh, as well as dying addicts and alcoholics and, and, and other individuals that do a trust you're, program. You're real savvy about what it takes to succeed or you're desperate. <laughs> Absolutely. Those are, the, those are the populations. And the reason I share that about the successful people is because that's usually gets people to do it a little bit more than the desperation piece. Yeah. Right. And like, I want to encourage as many people as I can, like, if you haven't done an inventory uh, 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 of your grosser handicaps of these defects, if you haven't done uh, that stuff, uh, especially for individuals in recovery, you better find somebody and get it done. What's the most important part of this? I want to move to the fifth step. But what's the most important part of the fourth step? that uh, some people don't do or skip over or that, that will- Taking complete, ownership, taking complete ownership of how we show up. Every bit of inventory is about how I've shown up. The delusion is that I get to sit around and talk shit about other people and my resentments. But the truth is, how have I shown up? Inventory is about living in a place of my selfishness, my dishonesty, and my fear, taking complete ownership and moving through it. Stop blaming the world. You know, the book says if you if you have already made a decision in an inventory of your grosser handicaps, you know some of this. The book is a, po a book of poetry too. That's yeah. Some people have the wrong idea about this book that it's like this hard ass, uh, and there's nothing like that in there. It just sort of flows. It's like a po it's poetry to me. Uh, the, so uh, and, and a lot of metaphor. That so if you uh, inventory of your grosser handicaps, that's a good way to say that. Um, that you have made a good beginning, that, that being so you have swallowed and digested some big chunks of truth about yourself. I just, I, it, the whole book has that kind of stuff in it. So, all right, so here we are. We have, uh, we got a big lot of writing that we did because we got supported by a great sponsor who's been through this. And here we are at the fifth step. The fifth step is we admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. <clears throat> Now, there's a, there's a phrase in there that says, now having made a, a personal inventory, what shall we do about it? <laughs> right? And then, this, then we're at the fifth step. So now we go out, and there's two parts of the fifth step. Um, and uh, the first part is confession. Um, the next part is the reading of the inventory. Um, and we got to keep in mind, man, at this point, like, yes, I've had a sponsor. Yes, I've had a mentor. Yes, I've had a spiritual advisor sit down and walk me through the process of the, the inventory right? Uh, but it's been me that's been writing it, okay? Now, keep in mind, we saw back in first step uh, that I suffer with the delusion, right? Uh, it says that I can't differentiate the true from the false, right? Mm -hmm. So this has been a solitary self-appraisal up, up to this point. It's just been me grading my paper. Let's change some language. And like, I don't know about you guys, but like when I grade my paper, I'm getting an A plus, okay? Like ultimately what I'm saying is when I'm looking at how I'm showing up in life, I'm doing pretty well, 
And, and you know, I don't see victimhood as victimhood. I just see that y'all are doing me wrong, you know. Um, and uh, so I'm going to need another person in my life. I'm going to need that, uh, that individual in my life to come in my life and me to read that inventory too so they can not – maybe I've noticed some selfishness in that inventory just a little bit, right? Uh, but not like I need to. See, when my sponsor or my mentor or my teacher grades my paper, I'm yeah. probably rolling out with a deep. What is it? So what does that look like in a fifth step? You're, so what, what do we mean? What, so we admit it to ourselves. That, I guess the, most of that happens in the fourth step. We write that mm -hmm. stuff out. We admit it to ourselves. And then a sponsor kind of pokes around at it and gets a, yeah, you might want to go a little deeper there, right? Well, a good sponsor is going to tell you the truth. And he's going to love you enough. He or she is going to love you enough not to, not to really care about your feelings. You know, and that's the language that I, I love use. to say that. He always you know? loves to say that, especially to me. I don't care about your feelings. Yeah. That, and, 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 like the, and, yeah. and like, I love you. I care about you. You know how easy it is to walk by somebody and not tell them anything? You know how much work and how much investment and how much love it takes to stop somebody and say, hey, hey, Dr. Bob, man, like I'm, I'm worried about you, man. I'm worried about you. you know, this is what I see. You know what you said, what you said to me. In the past, and, and you know how much it is. Like that's a true way to love somebody, man. Yeah. That's a true way. That's how we love each other in recovery. So a fifth step, I'm going to sit down with an individual who loves me. He's going to have a piece of paper and a pencil, and I'm going to be reading my inventory, and maybe he's bringing me some truth. He's yeah. pointing out uh, levels of selfishness in my relationship. He's pointing out levels of selfishness and defects of character, the fears, the stage characters, right? Where maybe I might want to owe an amends, but take that to God. Right. And he's writing this stuff down. He's, and this is a three, four hour process. And I know you wrote in your blog that we're going to get out soon uh, about a time when you know that you were less than honest in your fifth set. Because by the way, oh, yeah. steps are a cycle. We don't just do them when we're done. This is like Stephen and I have done more than one fifth step. So tell, do, you want to say something about the, 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 the apps comes from not being honest? The absolute necessity of being honest yeah. uh, in this process. And I just want to share experience as quick as I can here. I, uh, my first experience, I was blessed to be able to do three fifth steps. And I think God just knew that I would need that. Um, and I got to sit down with a guy and, and, uh, on my first fifth step and, and uh, uh, still being, you know, new to this deal. And um, I looked at this guy and I said, man, like, I ain't telling him everything. I ain't doing it, you know. Um, now, I told him I said everything, and uh, I didn't. I didn't get honest. And there was a tug in my heart, man, mm. for the first time. Now, remember, we talked about dishonesty earlier and how that was a part of my life. Now, being dishonest was never an issue for me. Um, and at this point, um, it's starting to become an issue, and I don't know why. And I'm sitting in a group on Monday, and, and uh, one of the, the staff says, man, how was your fist? It was good, bro. It was good, you know. And he's like, are you sure? You don't look very free. You usually mm -hmm. have a little bit of freedom on them, you know, uh, something of that nature. And I'm like, nah, man, I'm free. You can't tell. You know what I'm I was not free, ultimately. Yeah. And here's what I saw in the middle of that. Hindsight. I saw that I made a decision in the third step. And that decision was that I was going to be 110% thorough in the rest of this work. And this is a message I want to give the guys, man, is that whether you believe it or not, when you make a third step decision with just a mustard seed, a book talks about of willingness to seek this power. It's no longer in your hands. And I saw that somewhere down the line, if I didn't get completely honest on the next fifth step, I was going to shoot dope again. Mm. See, for the first time in my life, at least for a long period of my life, this honesty was really tugging at my heart. Mm. It was weird for me. And I got to that second fifth step and I and I, and I saw that and I got completely honest. And this was a cool old, old school cat, you know, uh, smoking out filter cigarettes. And an old crack can. And you can't tell them nothing. And uh, they see this thing. And, and I'm being a mess at a guy. I think mine is, you know. Uh, but anyway. Yeah, that's better. I dropped this confession on him. I'd done this. And I, I was there when this. And, and I dropped this, this confession on him. And it's like. And uh, he's like. Is that it? I'm like. Yeah. What are you. Yeah, bro, that's it. Like, that's that's a big deal. It's like, brother, I don't judge you. Let's keep moving. <laughs> and, and, like, for the first time in my life, I know y'all saw me get a little emotional earlier. Like, that's where God started taking the bricks down. See, I built a wall a long time ago. And I made a pact with myself that I wasn't going to cry. I made a pact to myself that I wasn't going to be vulnerable because it didn't benefit me where I was. And at that moment, God started taking down those bricks. 
And I cried for the first time that day in a long time, a real cry. And since then, man, like I've been able to, uh, I've been able to express my emotions as they come, um, not over emotional or, but like, as they come, I'm, I'm able to embrace that, uh, and, and, uh, and experience life pretty fully. And I've done, and, and I, I've lost track over the fist steps and you're absolutely correct. Um, we do this. A, hey, hey, this just, just on that, on that piece, uh, Stephen, I had a, a colleague of ours, uh, a clinical colleague say, you know, 12 step recovery is not trauma informed. <clears throat> well, I personally think clinical, a lot of clinical work is not, uh, addiction recovery informed, but uh, if you do a good fifth step and you hold the space where that where the pain can come up that's been buried, uh, that that is trauma resolution. It is it is highly trauma informed in terms of holding a loving space for the truth to come up with emotion. You know what I'm saying right now? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. A good, Absolutely. A good fifth step is like the Braveheart experience that we do at the last resort that you know well about. <clears throat> uh, we. Uh, we we consider that uh, we love it when a guy has just gotten done with his fifth step or he's about to go into it either way because it, it, it either helps him stay open or helps him to crack open to that deeper truth, right? Yeah. I think the fifth step is what Jung was taught. Uh, it's like the center of the healing. Uh, do you agree with that? That the, the fifth step is where the deepest part of the healing comes in the steps. There's a lot of movement in the fifth step, my experience, a lot. But that's always based on, Bob, that's always based on my investment, you know. Um, and, uh, and again, um, if I wouldn't have had the opportunity to do another one of those, I, uh, and I'm just very grateful for that because that second fifth step, I absolutely, and that's why I'm, my message is always honesty in that, honesty in it, man, and know that, um, that like, this is a life-changing deal, man. Don't miss it. You know, don't miss it through your fear. Uh, I got a couple. Of, I got a couple of quotes by a guy named Stephen Long. One <laughs> yeah. is the main thing is the truth, and it's in it's in like caps. Uh, it's pointless without an investment in honesty. It's just like I shouldn't say, it, but it's like masturbation, or it's like some just <laughs> spinning, spin, like being on a on a on a on a bike without a chain or something. If we're not gonna right. we're not gonna tell the truth, right? Here's the, here's the other one, and actually. Uh, uh, here, the, the, you're kind of poetic. I didn't know you were quite a poet. All right, so <laughs> we are painting a new life. It will never be a masterpiece if we are unwilling to spend the time and effort to make it this way. You remember writing that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I try to. The time, effort, investment. You love that word, don't you? It's important. I do. Yeah. I do. I do. And I, th I think it's, I think it's universal, you know, um, you know, I, I do. Uh, I think the biggest investment we can ever make uh, is our life, you know, and, uh, and it doesn't really take that much effort to invest, man. It really doesn't. Like, it seems like it before you're in, right? I mean, it's, how could I ever possibly make my whole, I can't go to that many meetings. I can't get a spot. I can't be working with other people. I got a life to live well. Yeah. Fortunately, we saw the, the specter of death. <laughs> it said, well, maybe you don't have so much life left. And the fact is, when I do my recovery and I'm doing it well, I have more time and space and more freedom. And it's, it works exactly the opposite of the way my addict mind uh, works. Uh, think yep. without support, you know, like right now. I, I just had this beautiful time with you and I'm like, my life is just so good. I get to do this. You know, I get to do this with a good brother who's uh, in his heart and changing the world. And I'm so glad you came on the uh, Recovery Crew podcast today. Uh, even and I think it's probably time to, I don't want to let go because I, I want to launch into the whole rest of the truth of the universe. We got this thing figured out, I think. <laughs> uh, uh, you, you let me know when you want me to speak about my ideas and perceptions. We'll definitely get you back here. We'll talk, I'm always down. Well, we, well, if we don't have it figured out, we'll get it figured out. Just don't tell my sponsor. So we're going to transition here and let go. <laughs> okay. And transition and let this, uh, let this go for today. Um, so you are on the, uh, the, the, the this is the uh, Recovery Crew podcast produced by uh, Deep Waters Recovery Programs. Uh, more information about the groups that are forming. We consider our program to be an advanced IOP 10 hours a week. Uh, you can 
contact us. So first of all, our podcast series, you can find it on our website at uh, deepwatersrecovery.com. That's the version that you can get this, the video version, uh, as well as on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, Deep Waters Recovery. And, uh, there, and we are on all, almost all of the main uh, podcast uh, platforms. So we're pretty easy to find the recovery crew. Um, and if you want to be part of this, like send us an email or call and uh, say we're full of crap or don't say I'm full of crap, just Stephen. Uh, but actually, we actually we like challenges too. So send your challenges or send your love, whatever you want, and we will uh, talk about it on the next podcast. Or if you're interested in our programs, uh, please reach out to us through the website. Or I think hopefully Nicole is still here. If we did, if you and I didn't put her to sleep, uh, Stephen, during this time. And uh, Nicole, will you tell folks how to get in touch with us? Yes. Um, thank you for listening to the Recovery Crew podcast. Um, we would love to hear from you. Like Bob said, if you have any questions about the program, comments, or if you want to be part of the crew, please reach out. Our number is 512-677-7847. Again, that's 512-677-7847. You can also reach us by emailing admin at deepwatersrecovery.com. That's admin at deepwatersrecovery.com. Nice. Maybe we'll all get a, a, a career in radio or something. Probably not. But uh, anyway, it's so good, good to be with you, my brother, and uh, more to come. Uh, Thanks for everybody being with us on the recovery crew. You're uh, swimming in the deep waters now.